Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. This weekly channeling video is with a theme. So I thought because it's the holiday season, when this video was first airing, that you would appreciate a holiday theme. And so this is with someone who sang an incredibly well-known Christmas song and was in a great Christmas movie. Let me give you a hint, White Christmas. Does that ring a bell? Hmm? We are going to have an afterlife conversation with Mr. Bing Crosby. And before I invite him in, I wanted to show you all that I am in the festive spirit with a cardigan, which really feels like a lot like a Bing style. You know, the guy liked to play golf, right? So here we go. Here is my festive holiday lights cardigan. There we go from Mr. Bing Crosby. Come on in, Bing. Oh, it's so nice to meet you. Oh my gosh, you guys, this energy is so great. I just, oh, so great. Now he's gonna sit kind of off to my left, which is nice, thank you. Usually they sit off to my right, but the window's here and I've got my beautiful tree in the background. We're in my kitchen, so this is the kitchen tree. Lots of purple on there. He says, lots of purple on there, yes. The purple medium, yes, energy, very cool, thank you. All right, so I have wanted to talk with you being for a while he says, you're a busy, you're a busy gal. He says, you're a busy gal. And uh, yes, I know. He said, you're a busy gal. You're a busy gal. I love your voice. I have loved your voice since I was a little girl. I grew up listening to the Christmas carols in my home and you, your voice just resonated so strongly with me. And that's synonymous for me personally with Christmas and we celebrated Christmas in my household. And so the holiday season was not the same unless we heard your voice and that iconic song, White Christmas. And now as an adult, I love the movie, White Christmas. And I just wanna say thank you. Oh, I just wanted to express that. <laughs> I really, wow. I mean, just beautiful, incredible voice. He says, thank you. He says, thank you, thank you. That's very kind, very kind. He says, very kind. And you guys, I'm gonna tell you, he's very charming. And he has an energy about him that is, his energy is good looking. <laughs> I mean, Bing, you're not really my type. I mean, we got, there's quite a bit of an age gap here, but uh, very suave. He feels very charming and, um, I, I could see how people would be like, oh, like swoon over him a little bit. <laughs> energy's like that. I can't help it. I feel energy. You guys, what is that? Do you remember what that is when you feel energy like that? Do you remember what that is for channeling? It's clairsentience. Sensing feeling through the heart chakra. And all of you guys have that. Everybody has that, I believe. Everybody that I've ever met, everybody that has ever had session with me, very clairsentient, feeling, sensing. Some people say empath, I say clairsentient energy. So you can tell I'm feeling that, right? I can't, I'm just like, wow. Powerful spirit energy. So I, I have some questions. I actually wrote a few questions down because I knew I'd get a little <laughs> distracted by the charming energy. <laughs> So I do know, um, and many people probably know, that um, uh, you transitioned after a day of golf. He says, what a way to go. I can't think of a better way to end it all, he says, <laughs> on the golf course, he said. You know, my handicap is not so bad either, he says, pretty good. And uh, he says, that's, he says, I can't think of a better way to go. <laughs> A beautiful weather, it's a beautiful day, good friends. Um, you're very social, Bing, it feels like. Is that that accurate? He says, well, am I, you know, do I like people? Yes, I, I like people, for the most part. Um, I feel like he's referring to a daughter. I feel like there's a daughter and a son. He just said son <clears throat> or son-in-law. Um, I also feel like he has a grandson. Daughter, okay, so he says daughter, son-in-law, and grandson. He's referring to this little family unit. Um, just acknowledging that. And so I have some questions for you. I wrote down some questions. I 
thought it would be great since it's the holiday season when this video is first being shared. We are getting into the spirit. Regardless of how we celebrate the ending of the year, it is an ending of a year, and so it's a transition time. We're moving into the end of a year, so this is like high energy voltage time from my experience as a psychic. And I would like to know if you have a message for us as we end this year and step into a new year is there is there a message um, for the ending of this year that you would like to share with us and i should mention in this video is recorded in december of 2018 if you're watching this at another time so do you have a particular maybe advice well how would i ask you for advice he says now a lot of people did ask me for advice and he looks like he's smoking a big cigar like it's kind of like smoking a big cigar <laughs> it's like you've got to indulge you gotta indulge every now and then. I feel like you probably indulge most of the time. He said, now that might be true, but I also worked very hard. He says, <laughs> hard work, um, hard work deserves the reward. You know, you must, you must enjoy the rewards as well. That's the sweetness of life, he says. So Bing, give us some advice as we're ending this year and, and hopefully, you know, opening up and stepping into a positive new year. Do you have any advice for us? He says, well, you know, with the holidays around, as the holidays approach, it's a time where people really think about what matters most to them. He says it's their family in most cases. For some, that can be a painful thing to think about. I think about our troops overseas and those who cannot be with their families on the holiday. And I also think about others who are struggling now, who are going through some difficult times in their lives. And it's a good thing for you all to think about that to recognize that not everybody's in the same situation that you're in. In fact, most people are not in the same situation you're in. Just to have a little, uh, have a good, I think it's a good idea to have a sense of that. Have a, I know, a, so I wanna say, Bridget, I wanna say awakening or awareness of that, but he's saying a sense. It's a good idea to have a, he's using a different word, have your wits, have your wits about, There's some, there's different energy coming in a little bit with him. He says, um, I think mountain, I think now more than ever, peace on earth isn't just a concept, you know. And that begins in your own homes. I know that might sound cliche or like old school values, you know, kind of too traditional, maybe too tame for some of you, especially you uh, younger generation folks, but it still rings true. It's still important. That peace on earth, it seems like a far out of reach, but it's not. Not in your own hearts, not in your own lives. You gotta focus on where you can make the most difference, you know, and uh, support one another. I think there are many people who are very lonely during this time of the year, and I don't wish that on anyone. You know, a guy like me, I mean, I, I appreciate what I got and uh, the opportunities I had in my life. I can only hope that you can enjoy some of what was created by some of us who come before you. And he's like, I hear, I hear the White Christmas song. <laughs> Beautiful. Will you talk about that particular song? Can you share about that particular song? Does it mean anything special to you or uh, what is the message? What is the meaning? Well, it's like I said, he says, he's holding a cigar. So when I'm doing this, it's like, that's how he's gesturing to me. He's like kind of pointing. He says, well, he said, it's like what I said. That peace on earth, it starts inside of you, inside your own families, at your own dinner table, with your loved ones, 
And even those who aren't with you anymore, those who are, you know, like me, old dead guys, <laughs> we're still with you. We certainly are in spirit, that is true. And I don't mean the kind of spirits you drink, my friends. I mean the kind of spirit that you are. And there is such a thing as God, and I'd like to share that with you. There is such a thing as that, as Bridget would say, the creator. He says, nods to me and says, the creator, source, you know, all that. There is such a thing as higher power. But you're all connected to that. You are. And in that song, that simple little song written for that, the time of year that everyone loves, right? It is special. And it's, it's from the heart. And it is whatever you need it to mean. That's what it is. Just one simple man sharing some memories. And if that touches you in your heart, then I'm glad for that. I am glad for that. It is quite a legacy, isn't it? It's quite a legacy. It sure is. I would say legendary. That song is the legend. I love it. It just puts me in the Christmas spirit and gets me in the mood for the holidays. And I just, and it's, it's being it really brings peace. That the song, the music just brings peace, you know? It says, you know, lots of songs, lots of songs do that for you. Lots of music does that. That's pretty wonderful, isn't it? That's pretty special. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Speaking of songs, let's ask Bing Crosby, who we are chatting with in the afterlife, about the song Drummer Boy that you sang with David Bowie, who's also in the afterlife. Can you talk about that song? How did that come to be or what that's, what's that like for you? When you, when, you, when you did that or when you reflect back upon that. He says it all, it all really unfolded quite naturally. It, he sh just showed up and we worked on some music and bada bing, bada boom kind of thing. He's like, boom, done, you know? He said it really wasn't that much of a production. Uh, nice young man, a bit different. And you know, different's good, that's okay, you know? And uh, I, uh, he was a father, so we had some things in common, both musicians, you know, both singer-songwriters. I, uh, I think it turned out quite nice. The harmonizations, the melodies, I think it turned out quite nice, quite nicely. So, did you have any reservations about doing that? I mean, I'm sure you sang with many people in your career, and, and you're known, like, for the Christmas carol, obviously, for the White Christmas song. Um, how is Bowie compared to other people you've sang with? <laughs> I dare, dare I ask? <laughs> oh, he says, oh, he was, he was a good guy. He was an all right guy. He said, he's an all right guy. He's an all right guy. Just, we're different, you know? We're different. We're different people, and that's okay. There's that's nothing wrong with that. I don't think he was too keen on uh, working with me, though. I, I don't know. You know, I'm an old guy, and, you know, he, I'm not quite sure how he felt about working with me, but I was just fine with that. He had a, he has a, you know, there's a, a tone in his voice that's just really, uh, really pretty special, really quite spectacular, very impressive to me. That little something there, I, I gotta respect that. Gotta respect a talent when you see a talent. So, so you didn't answer my question. How'd you feel about working, <laughs> singing with Bowie? As compared to other people, he says, well, he says, well, he wasn't the prettiest I've, I've been able to perform with. I can say that. <laughs> like, okay, he wasn't the prettiest, huh? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Oh, gosh. Okay. So, um, let's see. Do I have anything else? So, do you have a message about the new year? Oh, wait, wait. I know I want to ask about. So, in the afterlife, this is a great question. I know many of you would like to hear about this, I would assume. And that is, in the afterlife, are there, how do you celebrate the holidays? Like, are there, is there Christmas? You know, is there Hanukkah? Is there Kwanzaa? Is there that? Is there the holiday season? 
can you talk about that a little bit? Or how do you celebrate or, or, or even notice, mark the passage of time between this year and another year? Can you talk about that a little bit? He says, oh, that's a good question. That's a good question. You know, it's not the same. It's not, he's showing me like batteries being plugged in. Like, um, it's not as simple as A side, B side, plus side, negative side. It's not as simple as that. Um, it doesn't go from one place to another. It doesn't, it's not a, a, a here and there concept, he says. Um, I would liken it to a bridge because I think that, that human minds can understand that, he says. The, the, the idea of walking across a bridge and first you're here and then you're there is relevant to the changing of the years or the time, he says but it's not completely accurate. It is a way that the mind could understand, he says, but it's not completely accurate. It's more of a hot air balloon ride, he says. You get into the hot air balloon and you float up and you just kind of flow or the wind goes and you kind of adjust enter the, the, to the wind and the atmosphere and you kind of just float and flow into the next place. That's more accurate, he says, that's more accurate as far as the passage of time, like a hot air balloon and not as much like a bridge, more like a hot air balloon. Uh, as far as holidays go, there is a connection to how people are, are celebrating or honoring the holidays, whatever the holiday is for them. And that also goes with birthdays and anniversaries and special moments of time that are marked on the, a human calendar and times from our lives that we experienced that were important to us, that our loved ones who are still in human bodies remember. And it's the loved ones who are still in human bodies that remember. Those are the connectors. Those are the little marks on the calendar, the little dot on the calendar date, because they remember. So then too, we are aware of that and we can then be present now, it's not the same. It's not like I'm going to, you're not going to sing B, you're not going to sing see Bing the ghost floating on in when it's a Christmas time, stuffing the stockings or singing the songs or anything like that. But you may get a memory. And the memory is that little dot, that pin on the calendar date. And that is extremely impactful. That is a connection right there. And it's through that memory. And I think it's through that heart that love that really bonds us all, soul to soul connect, connections. But because I've been a person, because we, the spirits in the afterlife, have been people, we can relate to that. We can remember, we can connect into that little dot on the calendar. We can translate that way. We can speak that language of humanity. That's how we can reflect and we can remember. That's how I can remember and recall my memories on earth. It's the same. So because you hold it and you have that memory, that pin on the calendar, so do I as a soul, as a spirit. But don't be confused. That doesn't mean I'm stuck. I'm not, you're not gonna see, see ghost of being floating around waiting for that holiday season to start. So people can remember me. No, no, no. It's not like that. It's not like that for me, at least I can say. And for many of my colleagues, we agree. <laughs> but yes, we can visit and we can most commonly visit in your memories and what you remember. And Bridget could probably describe this better than I, but it's through the secret little place in your mind and that tiniest of place in your heart that's where we connect. And I do believe it probably is easier for you in your bodies to feel spirit during the holidays because it is the spirit of the holidays. The spirit of the energy, it gets all stirred up and many things are possible and people are so caring. People just all of a sudden get so caring, so giving. There's charities and contributions and toy drives and all this stuff that you connect to and, and open your hearts 
And then you connect with each other. And because of that, it's easy for us to be around that and for you to feel us because we are that energy. We live in the heart. We live in the memories and the mind as well, both, both. So while we don't celebrate the way you celebrate, we celebrate with you while you celebrate. That's the most accurate way to describe how holidays are in the afterlife. Now that's from my opinion, that's just my opinion, what I know my perspective. Now I've been dead for a while now, so I think I know a few things, but somebody else might have a different view, and then if they do, that's, I'm all right with that. That's, that's okay. That's okay by me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. Wow. Awesome. <laughs> wow, you guys, can you feel this? Take a moment and just feel the energy, the spirit of the season, and know that your loved ones are with you, especially during this time because your hearts are open and we are connected soul to soul. Remember that. Remember that. You heard it yourself from Bing Crosby in the afterlife. Mr. White Christmas, you know. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful way to share and connect this holiday season. This is Bridget at Above Life Channel. I'd like to thank my guest today, Mr. Bing Crosby from The Afterlife. I hope you've enjoyed this video dialogue and that has given you some insight. And I hope it has inspired your spirit and filled you up with hope. Remember here at Above Life Channel, the purpose is to inspire your spirit. This is your life right here, right now. So live it. Just, just live it. Thank you so much for watching.